Hello, Uncle Coach, it's Pastor Keith, and it's morning prayer for Thursday, September 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 6, 2024. Oh, my. And it's uh, still me, Pastor Keith, coming from Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani Town, and here we are. This is from Acts 4, the Acts of the Apostles, in which uh, Jesus ascended in chapter 1. The, the Holy Spirit came upon him in uh, chapter 2, I think it was, or all at once. I don't know. Uh, and then, um, oh, yep, chapter 2. And then they, they preached a sermon, and then in chapter 3, Peter and John, the two big leaders of uh, the apostles, uh, the first amongst equals, uh, went to the temple to pray and they healed a, a crippled man who had been lame all his life and caused much ado and hubbub, if I might say so. If you want all the specifics, go to chapter 3 and read it and then roll into 4. I'm going to start with verse 13 and... Uh, head up to verse 31. So this is really the first miracle after Pentecost. Now, when, oh, and then they got arrested and they got hauled in front of uh, the courts. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, that is the people who wanted to uh, try them, and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them in and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to, keep, than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. That was old back then. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. It is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had been destined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Wow, there's a lot in that. I'm thinking a little bit about last Sunday's sermon uh, where I said there's no explanation, none, just a resurrection. No explanation, none, just a resurrection. Uh, God doesn't always explain what's going on but god acts so that um i think is an important thing to think through here also notice that god acts through the ordinary what did they say at the start uneducated and ordinary men hmm like you 
like me, people who may not be the wisest in life, but those of us, yeah, who are used by God in our faithfulness. That's a good thing. That is a very good thing. And you'll notice also, finally, that the healing is not a supernatural event in and of itself. They happen all the time. People were healed all the time by all sorts of healers. But in this one, they pointed to the name of Jesus. So in the scriptures, miracles aren't supernatural events. As one Christian thinker uh, said, Eduard Schweitzer says, uh, it only becomes a miracle when you see it as one, when you see it. And so it's always about relationship. It's not natural and supernatural, it's all natural. And it's all about relationship with you, with me, with us, with Christ and the power of the spirit, we are brought to God. And so we cannot keep quiet. We have to shout the gospel from the roots. Let's uh, take a minute here, a pule kako. Let us pray for the spread of the gospel. By your word, eternal God, your creation sprang forth, and we were given the breath of life. By your word, eternal God, death is overcome. Christ is raised from the tomb, and we are given new life in the power of your spirit. May we boldly proclaim this good news in our words and our deeds, rejoicing always in your powerful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now, may this God who heals, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and spread the gospel. Thanks be to God. See you tomorrow.